Richardson is a legal and political analyst. He joins me now live. Paul, uh, thank you so much for your time today. Great to see you. I want to go ahead and start with your reaction to what Kendall Coffey had to say and give us a little bit of insight into what exactly is the strategy here? What is Trump asking for and what is a skiff? Yeah, well, I think the, the strategy here is for him to try and get some of the documents moved around. I would not be surprised if he then says, do you see how the documents are so easily transferred around that where you keep them and how you keep them isn't as important when they're using it to try and prosecute me, but not when I'm just holding on to the documents. That's why I think he's asking to review the documents and to look at the evidence in various locations, because any location that he sits at or any location that he reviews those documents at, I think that's the argument that he's going to make. The, the qualification of those documents as a skiff or the other terms that he's using doesn't change their actual legal qualifications from them being top secret, classified, privileged, confidential. Those are the terms that we need to be paying attention to, not the legal terms he's trying to classify the evidence as. So we just cut through all of that to try and anticipate what defenses he's trying to build in for himself and how he needs to be held accountable in this case with this judge. Although even with this judge, I have some real concerns about some of the recent rulings that she's been making, specifically in this case, that are challenging the prosecution in ways that I find somewhat vacuous. All right. And why is that specifically? Go ahead and expand on that, if you will. Sure. Well, what she's asking for is on her own, she asked for an examination of jurisdiction in terms of where the grand jury was pulled. And most prosecutors know and most legal authorities know that there is a long arm, arm statute in civil procedure. Prosecutors are given wide discretion in terms of how they put their cases together, specifically, in fact, in areas like this where we didn't even have to have a grand jury. The prosecutors themselves could have brought the charges on their own. But to the degree she's raising the question and asking a challenge about why a grand jury would review documents from another jurisdiction and then charge it in a separate one at a federal level, that seems very rudimentary and very obvious. For one, you can authenticate the documents in that specific area from Washington, D.C. So that could be a reason why they started the grand jury there to review the behavior. Also in D.C., that's where the documents came from. Also in D.C., where is where the harm can be measured. So it could be any and all of these things to answer her own question. I'm concerned that she's raising the issue in and of itself as a distraction to the actual charges and to the behavior from the defendant and instead challenging the prosecution in this way. Uh, I have real concerns about where she's going with the decisions that she's making. I'm looking to her to interpret the schedule specifically to see the schedule of accountability for the trial, the schedule of accountability for the hearings, and whether or not she's going to be granting him more discretion in that case than all the other myriad of cases, charges, and indictments that he's facing throughout the country. And I'm concerned that I don't want her to try and take lead and either consolidate cases or to be the leader in terms of a schedule that accommodates him in ways that would be inappropriate given the charges that he's facing. All right, so let's go ahead and stick to this idea of the schedule because we're hearing that special counsel Jack Smith has been asking that the trial date be set for January of 2024. Paul, let's talk about the timing of all of this and how it could all play out. Absolutely. So the timing is really important here because what Trump is arguing and he is slow walking everything. So in the myriad of charges, he is filing motion after motion, issue after issue, trying to buy out more time to put all of these things off all the while arguing and asking that the trials and hearings be put out as far as possible because he doesn't want them to interfere with his route as a candidate. Here's the issue, though. I'm concerned and I'm watching what's happening with all of the prosecutors pushing back on those schedules. But what I'm most paying attention to is what's likely to happen in Georgia. And here's why. That schedule, those potential indictments, which, by the way, will be the fourth indictment, is going to be independent. And I'm excited about how they're approaching this prosecution. And remember, this is a local prosecution that they are not allowing federal privilege. And so that means that they expect for Trump to come in, to be arrested, to have a mugshot, to evaluate bail conditions from the judge. You know, that I think that's going to be really interesting in seeing how that plays out because they're not going to follow nor coordinate with the federal charges that are all pending. And the interesting thing is that case specifically is going to have some cross-pollinization with the secretary general 
and that election fraud charge that is likely coming this week or next week. And the interesting thing about it is because it overlaps into the charges that we're seeing in D.C. for the January 6th stuff. And it's not going to be double jeopardy because it's federal and state charges. They can be the same incident and there won't be double double jeopardy. And the most interesting thing about, thing about that case is separate from double jeopardy as an issue, there also cannot be a federal pardon. So even if he wins the nomination, mm -hmm. even if he wins the presidency, he can't absolve himself from the liability from those mm -hmm. potential felony charges in Georgia. And that's what makes it all the more interesting to me. All right, legal analyst Paul Henderson, we always appreciate your time. Thank you so much for stopping by.